Hey. hey. How's everybody doing out there? Welcome to Happy Hour here at the Pilot Championship Series. We are rolling with you guys on some open play. We're going to start out this with the top 10 games starting in just about 40 seconds from now. And uh, we'll be rolling through top 10, Messelperch, top dog, Pride of Minnesota, and end with some Vikings victory. Oh, uh, yeah. We had a great open session today at the end of the uh, lunch hour broadcast. Yeah, that was super cool. Yeah, very fun stuff. We'll give you who's the who's our top seven so far after uh, two sessions. We're going to have a couple more sessions uh, in the next few days. We got one coming up tomorrow. And then I think uh, we got one. I don't know the exact date, so I won't say. But uh, we'll have another one as well coming up uh, not too long from now. Maybe next week. Oh, yeah. Those yeah. open sessions are really cool. Uh, really cool thing. Absolutely. Being able to get, get a chance, a different different pathway to get into that uh, finals. That's right. Because there's a total of 12 folks that are going to make those finals. But then also, even if you're not one of those 12, it's kind of like Biggest Loser. You know how, like, the people that get kicked off the show, that yeah. they can later come in and win, uh, not take that ultimate prize, but they can they can win also. Yeah. So people that don't make it can also play and kind of make it in another in another group of folks. So, but there's going to be 12 finalists. Seven of them will come from those open sessions, and five will come in from the top scores in each one of the five games. Oh yeah. So that's how that's going. Well, we are now rolling in our game of top ten. The current highest score, well. This is at the end of yesterday, right? So yes. the end of yesterday. Uh, the, the top score in top 10 was Family Guy with 29,080 points. Oh, the last um, the last uh, open, uh, open session we're going to have is going to be Tuesday at 6. Okay, there you go. Tuesday at 6. So immediately after the Happy Hour broadcast on Tuesday... Uh, that will be the last open session. So to be the combination of all those as far as your session doesn't combine with other sessions. It's just your highest session within any of those four sessions. Um, if you're in the top seven of oh, those, yeah. then you're you're in. So um, if you some reason got in on both the top five scores in the games and the sessions, one of those would not count because it's going to be 12 unique players in those oh yeah finals, right? you know want to get as many as many of the 12 as we can that's right we you know two people i mean one person won't take up two spots it'll be uh 12 unique finalists so that's uh well as, the uh, family guy getting on is new uh as of yesterday yeah that was a change uh from we had Lou Bear, I think, was the old top score. Yeah. Now Family Guy has taken that over. Which is and funny because the top 10 score wasn't our lowest score. No. Of all no. the scores. It's a think, nice score. I think it was a it was a pretty decent score, like a it was, 28. Yeah, it was 28,000 and something. 28,000, yeah. which is lower than our Pride of Minnesota or Top Dog. But uh, ended up having a really good game uh, from Family Guy. Uh, yeah. Getting into 29,000 which is really uncharted range. Only RJ5616, uh, who got 30,000, yeah. has even been even close to that. Yeah, that's the only one I know of uh, like that. So uh, great job out there, Family Guy. Now everyone here is shooting to top that score. Mad Dog has a huge score. For look at the little amount of plays. 10,560 points already with uh, not even a quarter of his uh, plays used up. So on pace for a huge huge game here we'll see how that turns out for mad dog uh we got noodle 1029 slim jim slim jim was i believe one of our top five yeah last week slim jim won the photo signed by bc johnson uh oh so you see slim jim back out at it again so um in yeah, our not, top ha five. not happy with with just getting the photo Wants well, to get some more prizes. That's right. So, uh, well, hey, our old leader in this game, Lou Bear, jumping into first place uh, with not that's, that many plays. Yeah, that's a good score as well right now. Yeah. Uh, hopefully they can uh, repeat that again and uh, have a chance at getting that uh, top score. I'll tell you what, in seventh place there, Scuba Steve has just been absolutely killing it uh, in every which way that he's been playing. We've been seeing him all over the place. Uh, currently coming out of yesterday, he had the top score in Vikings victory for the week. Oh yeah. Uh, he's also in our top seven uh, for the, um, 
for the se open session plays currently. So wow. um, his open session play, his top one, is in third place there currently. And he's got the number one in Vikings victory for the week right now. So he's in line right now for that feeling. Uh, autograph uh, mini hey, that's, helmet, a, that's so. a good spot to be at. Yeah, very, very good. Um, so, but Lou Bear with a nice score out there in first place. There's Boat Racer, been active on the chat. Good to see you out there, Boat Racer. Uh, check in with us, anybody that checks in. We will definitely send you guys some luck. Oh, and it uh, does seem to seem when we send out the luck, you their their status increases it, and they get into that top ten range and stuff does. like that. It happens. It happens. For There's no sure. science, but no, no. But I've been working up a formula, you know. You, but I one time I, I forgot to carry the two, <laughs> and then I, I so I it got all messed up. But I'm gonna keep working on it. I've been uh, hiring the tabulators on the side, just when they're off. When they're off, <laughs> you got Mad Dog in first out there. Lou Bear wow. in second. Mad Dog, Lou Bear, and Noodles uh, 1029 are all in really good uh, spots right now. With only each of them, with only about. Well, Mad Dog's now about halfway through his plays, yep. but uh, Lou Bear and uh, uh, let me see, wait till it comes up again. Noodles uh, 1029 are both uh, a little, a little bit lower than that, and uh, are both really high as well. Yeah, they're they're all got some really nice uh, scores, so we'll see as their plays keep on rounding out. But uh, yeah, good good to see everybody out there playing. Yeah, it looks like um, Steve is the first one to run out of plays. Okay, in that Steve top out. ten. Okay. Uh, then uh, purple, purple craze. craze. Yeah. Yeah. Add the one at the end. I've seen that add a little bit of luck. Sometimes it does. And purple craze. I like it for the for the Vikings mix. That purple craze name. Yeah. And then is that Jimi Hendrix? I think purple haze is Jimi Hendrix, right? So uh, that was one of his albums, uh, Purple Haze. Uh, so uh, I like to play it on the words there. Oh, we're playing. What Boat Racer One just said is playing Vikings. By the way, oh, thought we were playing top ten. So there we go. If it's uh, if it's if Vikings, it's some Vikings. I'm I mean, guess, yeah. I guess I'm just off here on the schedule. Here, I'm gonna pull up the schedule on my schedule thing, and then make sure so I got. So then we accurate. know exactly what game you guys are playing. Yeah, we. So then we sure know what we're going after. Yeah. Because if you guys are going after that uh, top five. For uh, Vikings victory, they got then, a really good shot. Then these these are looking really good with Mad Dog already at sixteen thousand points. Yeah, I'm pulling up my schedule right now. I should know I scheduled all these games. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. Uh, yeah, I see uh, Lou Bear with still a lot of plays and over fifteen thousand points. That is a good place to be at, especially if we're playing some Vikings bingo. Yeah, we'll see where we are at. Oh, and look at, speaking of Lou Bear, Lou Bear is now in that first place spot with 16,000 points. Yeah, uh, it looks like we got top 10 coming up next. Um, so currently, I'm sure, I'm sure you know, Boat Racer is, is right. He can see what we can't see, and that's who he's actually playing. Um, <laughs> So uh, I'm guessing, yeah, so since top 10 is coming up next, then they're in a Vikings victory, which means then immediately after this, we will get into uh, top 10, then we'll go Meso Perch, Top Dog, and Pride of Minnesota. So it's just, you just flip and Vikings, we flip Vikings victory to, to the start us off. Start of We're show. starting off hot. Yeah. Yeah, I'm wondering, I think that probably what changed that up on us, I'm just thinking about the time schedules, is uh, with the open session play ch change just a little bit on how that all uh, how that all rolled. So, um, yeah, look at fifth place, uh, manual uh, 0815, over 10,000 plays with still a quarter of their plays left. That's a pretty good spot to be in, in that fifth place spot. But Lou Bear is the story right now with 17,000 points. See if they can get over 19,870 uh, to see if they can get to that top five. There we go. Our notes are actually updated now. Tony went in there. I got just fresh off the Nikki yes. Network. And then Tony jumped into the show notes, made the correction. We are now correct on that. Uh, there it is. Uh, we've got... Uh, Vikings victory, then top ten, then Messel Perch, top dog, and then Pride of Minnesota. So the schedule oh, is correct. There looks like uh, a lot of people have finished up with their plays. 
Um, Lou Bear with 17,000. That's a nice play in Vikings victory, I must say that. Not quite enough to get them into that top five uh, as the, well, coming into the day. I'm going to say it that way. Yes, coming then, into the day. Then that MD Ha was uh, in that fifth place spot with 19,465 points. So uh, that wouldn't be quite enough. And, well, uh, when uh, I'm forgetting the name now because it just went off the screen. Uh, person who's in second place right now. When they came out to that really early lead. Oh um, yeah. To start off. Mad Dog and Noodle ten twenty. Yeah. 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 They were all just. They took that really early lead. I was like, holy guacamole! We're about to get three people <laughs> in our top five. Right. Right. Um, things were working for them, and then it seemed to slow down a little bit for them at the end there. Yeah, they had a hot start, uh, not quite as good as the back half. Um, but you know what? It was uh, still a nice, and it looks like, Lou Bear, you're going to get the win here in this round. But Willissa has some plays left if they can get in before the end. Oh, yeah, that could boost them over. I mean, because any of those plays could get you a lot of points. You never know when it's going to happen. So it looks like we got all the plays in that we're going to get here in this round of Vikings victory. And there it is. Lou Bear with the win. Congratulations, Lou Bear. Nice job. And uh, that means we're going to get enrolled for our top 10 game. This is now the game where Family Guy has that 29 oh, yeah. uh, point game. Well, so. since we skipped out on talking oh. about that top five standings. Yeah, and you know what we should do, though? We got to send some luck out to Boat Racer for Oh, yeah, for, for, letting, us for letting us know. We could stack it, stack double the amount of luck because he's get, letting us be informed. There we go. There you go, Boat Racer 1, keeping us nicely informed. That's right. That's the nice thing about the chat. We get to interact with you guys, and you guys get to – Keep us informed for sure. So what were you going to say? Top 10. Oh, yeah. To five, no, I'll say top five, 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 five. for, uh, for uh, the Vikings victory. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, well, in that fifth place spot uh, is MD Haha -Ha with uh, 19,465 points. That's in line to win a Vikings baseball hat. Yeah, nice prize. Uh, it is the actual uh, hat that, uh, that they're wearing on the sidelines. Uh, at least... I think they are. It's the ones that we saw last week. That's exactly what they're wearing on the oh, sidelines. Yeah. Then the stocking hat, again, that they wear on the sidelines is that fourth place prize. And uh, this week, who's in line with that? What? It's Anita Alibi. Uh, Anita Alibi got 19,875 points. Then in... Uh, oh, in yeah. Oh, I just saw... Uh uh, Amelia comment and uh, just says, hey, make sure you guys vote on the new ETAB tournament bracket on Facebook, Wild Walleye versus Winter Wolves. Yeah, it's a, that's a fun one. I think uh, I, I'm just going to make my prediction that I think, uh, you know, Wild Walleye is going to win that. I mean, it's a classic. It is. Uh, I think obviously coming into the tournament, the favorites are Buku Bucks and Wild Walleye. Yes, those are yeah. those are two of the top ones right there. For sure. So um, I did make a prediction on Facebook that I thought that, you know, we'll see. But Double Eagle, who did get the win yesterday, okay, okay um, over Vikings Warcraft, all right, that Double Eagle could make some noise in this tournament. I, w I would not be surprised. Double Eagle is a great game. It is, and it's got the extreme uh, deck, which is awesome, super fun to play. And so uh, we'll see if that makes some noise. But uh, I'm I'm going to put the prediction. I mean, this is the easy pick. This is picking the favorite, and that is uh, Wild Walleye wins that. Uh, we'll see. I think Winter uh, Wolf is a fun game. To oh, play. it's a great game. I mean, all of these games are really great. Yeah. Um, but Wild Walleye definitely a classic. A classic game for sure. So, but um, yeah. So then in that third place spot, someone can win another one of those. Big, Vikings baseball oh, yeah. hat. Who's in line for that right now? That's Boat Racer 1. Okay. Just checking in with us uh, on Facebook. Shot him over some luck. He has uh, 19,925 points. Uh, that's the, uh, his high score, and we actually got to watch that on Monday. Yeah, we were on air with him when he got that. So uh, Now, I think you need to get in that 20,000-point range oh, to really yeah. feel comfortable that you're going to be in that top five. Well, the next two, the ones that are in line actually right now for the autograph 
stuff. Yes. They're over that 20,000 mark right yeah, now. Yeah, I yep. think they, I, I would feel okayly safe that they're going to stay in the top five. Yep. I would not feel safe that they're going to stay in that top two spot, though. No, they, that, they could get past. Last week, Birdie Boy, our current high score in all of Vikings victory, mm -hmm. last week, Birdie Boy got that top spot with almost 26,000. He got 25,795 Points. Oh, yeah, so, that's still the number one score in Vikings yeah, victory. It is. It is. So, But we got Flash Daddy out there, former jackpot winner, uh, we in second place right now in line for that signed uh, photo of Alexander Madison, uh, and that is with 22,225 points. So um, nice job out there, Flash Daddy. Oh, yeah, and then the first place spot is the person we've been talking about a bunch uh, today is a Scuba Steve. Yeah, Scuba Steve. I mean, Steve's Scuba Steve is in our top uh, seven for the for the open sessions. Yep. And then also in, our, in the number one player in uh, Vikings victory this week so far. I mean, he's been killing it. Scuba Steve in line for that signed uh, mini helmet by Adam Thielen. Yep. Uh, scoring 22,000. 945 points in his top game. Yeah. Pretty good game by Scuba Steve right there. That is. That's pretty awesome stuff. So, you know, one of the things I've been thinking about this week with us having that autographed Adam Thielen helmet, yes. you know, was uh, first off it was about the whole – who's the emergency quarterback because I kind of thought it was Adam Thielen, right? And then we found out who the emergency to the emergency quarterback was, which was Kyle Rudolph. Yes. Right? So, but I've been thinking about Adam Thielen all week with him having that top prize. Uh -huh. And uh, so the other thing I thought of was that he's one of the very few Vikings, right, that yeah. is a, a Minnesotan, right? Uh, yes. So, like, he's actually, you know, born, you know, lived his whole life in Minnesota, went to Minnesota State, um, you know, then, uh, he, you know, grew up in Detroit Lakes. We've got a lot of players out there from Detroit Lakes. Yeah. Um, so, um, anyways, you know, Alan Thielen, Minnesota. So, uh, and then I got me thinking, I wonder how many uh, Minnesotans are on the Vikings. Yeah. Right? And I saw C.J. Ham is from Minnesota. He's from Duluth. Um, you know, ah, and, okay. Uh, so CJ Hams from Minnesota, and then I was wondering, well, how many guys in the NFL? Yeah, are from Minnesota. From Minnesota, and so there is actually 14 current NFL players uh, that are from Minnesota. Some uh, nice ones. Yeah, some really nice ones. I mean, uh, at the top of the list there, I mean, I th it's no surprise to anybody from Minnesota that uh, that Larry Fitzgerald's from Minnesota. You know, yeah. You know, well, his dad is an icon in Minneapolis. Yes. Uh, his dad, a uh, longtime sports reporter, just kind Didn't of. Didn't Larry yeah. Fitzgerald uh, grow up being like a ball boy for the, yeah. uh, for them? Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, he was, I think, I, I could be wrong on this, but I think Larry Fitzgerald Sr., was the original like radio broadcaster that brought the a Vikings player on him with him at once a week and all that okay. and was kind of like that original guy in Minneapolis uh -huh. that did all that and so he was really tight with the Vikings and kind of in there with them uh -huh. and so then uh, Larry Fitzgerald Jr. got to be a ball boy for the Vikings That's all that awesome. grew up around the team and all that kind of stuff and uh, yeah now he's turned into a Hall of Fame. Uh, wide receiver. Man, but, if only uh, he could have came into his hometown. Yeah, yeah, I would. I would like to see him in the. In I the mean, I, goal. I mean, we would have been spoiled with the kind of oh. hands at wide receiver. I mean, if not we that gotten Larry Fitch, Fitzgerald. <laughs> not that the Vikings have been short on wide receivers. Oh you know? yeah, between uh, Chris Carter and uh, Randy Moss right. and just so many just stellar. Oh, Anthony and now, Carter. Uh, now, yeah. now it's looking like. Uh, Justin Jefferson's going to turn into another classic wide receiver. Oh. I mean, uh, the, now that I'm kind of think of it, thinking of it, the, the Vikings kind of have a wide receiver draft pattern similar to the Steelers where they just can't get it wrong. No, they do it right every year. Hey, I remember uh, him saying that he's got a feeling uh, that he's going to win that autographed helmet. There's Fishy24 here in this game of top 10 jumping into first place. Uh, looks like he's got a nice round underway right now out there with 9,570 9, points uh, with uh, less than half of his plays in. Oh, yeah. So nice beginning to that game for Fishy24. There's Scuba Steve again, Slim Jim, Chuckles, Jackpot 108, and all out there in our top nine. So, anyways, yeah, a lot of great players uh, out there in 
the NFL that are from uh, that are Minnesotans. Uh, yeah. So that's a, that's well, a cool thing. There's uh, what? Who else is from Minnesota? The Larry uh, Fitzgerald. Yeah. Tom Compton, good tackle. Um, yeah. Yep. Billy Turner, uh, who's uh, also a tackle. Um, of course, Adam Thielen. Max Williams. This is in the order of longest in the NFL. Like, oh, how long okay, been in the NFL. that makes more sense because yeah. I was like, I was like, this isn't by by who's the best because I see Frank Ragnow. He's a really good center for the Lions now. Yeah, Frank Ragnow is a really good player. Um, let's see here. Uh, Amon Cook, Hooker, um, good safety out there. Anyways, there's a lot of guys there. It's in order. So, um, like, let's see. Blake Cashman. Uh, Amani Hooker and Ryan Conley are all just, you know, since 2019. Yeah. So they're the bottom of the list. So it is Larry Fitzgerald's been in the NFL since 2004. So oh, that's why. Wow. He's I mean, at the top he's been a consistent player since 2004. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing an, that he's been playing for so long. There's an eight year difference between him and number two longest tenure of a Minnesotan. Uh, in the NFL is Tom Compton. He's been in the NFL since 2012, um, which is a nice run in the NFL. Oh, yeah. But uh, the fact that Larry Fitzgerald, Larry Fitzgerald has had more of a quarterback length of a career right. than a wide receiver length because oh. a wide receiver usually spans from about 7 to 12. I'd right. say a really good wide receiver. Right. Is around. It's not as short as a running back where they take that pounding yeah, uh, but where little, I would say running back's more 9 to 5. Right, 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 right. Of really good seasons. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Wide receiver's more 7 to 12 really yeah. good seasons. The fact that he's played for almost 20 seasons. I mean, it's incredible. Incredible. Hey, there's A. Schwacki, uh in first place. Good to see you out there. Um, we got Jackpot 108 in second place. We got Willissa in sixth. Slim Jim in seventh. Scuba Steve in eighth. Cookie in ninth place out there. In uh, second place, we've got Vichy24 in jackpot is in 108s in third. Slim Jim in fourth. And Chuckles in fifth. We still got uh, just under four minutes left to get Oh, your yeah. So. I'll, I'll be looking for uh, Chrissy uh, 1965 to make a move into that top five uh, yeah. with about a quarter of uh, her plays left. Looking pretty strong right now. Yeah, I got a lot of plays. Uh, oh, look yep, it. There you go. Quickly, you quickly was put into fruition. Yes, yes. You said it, and it came to fruition for sure. Well, we got a few national days we should probably get into. Oh, yeah, we do. Get into. Um, yeah, uh, the first one looks a little bit like um, possibly uh, – this is the actual true thing, but it, it seems like maybe U UPS sponsored this or something. Yeah, maybe a little bit. It's a National Package Protection Day. Encourages homeowners to stay alert during the high delivery times. Uh, protect your homes against package theft, which uh, becomes more and more prevalent during the holidays. I mean, yeah, it's it's just a reminder to just yeah. make sure when when they drop the package off, you get it off your steps real nice and quick, and so that no one can just snatch it from you. Yeah, I always I wonder about you know I see those ads for like the ring. Uh, yeah. thing where you know when you push uh, or we need like motion I'm guessing is uh -huh. how that works that the camera comes on and you actually yeah. got the recording of who's coming up onto your porch oh yeah like I've that. seen some really funny videos come yeah. from there it's less less I've seen actual like theft videos come from those things and more just like really funny videos of like guys like during the ice time just slipping on the ice like five different oh, times and they're like yeah the people the homeowners like are you okay and he's like yeah i'm i'm good like <laughs> i can't do anything about this like yeah 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 uh it's uh yeah but there is a lot of theft out there and so make sure you're doing everything you can to protect those packages uh, oh, yeah. we're all getting a lot of deliveries these days especially as have less access to going out there and shopping at the stores. Oh yeah, and so um, it's a good idea to get some kind of a protection, whether it's you know one of those video uh, doorbells or whatever you can do. Um, you know, a lot of folks will have another special place, uh, you know, like a butler pantry that they people can put packages in, uh -huh. but it locks it so that you know uh, thefts theft can't happen. So, anyways, uh, a lot of good options out there, but make sure you're protecting your package. Uh, this one, uh, I definitely like a good fritter. And so, National oh, Fritters oh. Day. 
allows for no frittering away of the time. Make haste and get them while they're hot. Fritters come in a variety of forms from morsels dripped in flavorful batters to bits of dough stuffed or filled with delicious surprises. Uh, do you have a favorite kind of fritter? Probably like, uh, like apple fritter. Apple fritter is what I think of as I mean, as well. that's that's probably that's the top classic, one, especially yeah. when it's got the little apple chunks in it too. Like, Good. like I like it more. I know some people like that are a little bit pickier. They don't like the chunks, but yeah. I'm definitely a ch have the apple chunks in there. Right. Yeah. No, I I am too. I like the I like a true apple fritter. Hey, you 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 called it. And look at there, into first place now here right at the end. I mean, look at just uh, 201 points above wow. A. Schwacki uh, into first place is Chrissy, 1965. Congratulations, Chrissy, with just uh, about 15 seconds left. We'll see if you can hold on yeah. to that. But uh, it looks like a pretty good chance Chrissy's going to get that win. Um, we got A. Schwacki in second. We got Fishy 20. Four in third, Jackpot 108 in fourth, Melissa in fifth, and there's our time. So uh, we'll let the tabulators do their work and see, uh, make sure this is official. And oh as yeah, soon as it is, we'll let you guys know. Yeah, well, the score that we were he trying to get was Family Guy with 29,000 points. Uh, Chrissy, 1965, not quite getting there, but really good round for Chrissy, 1965, uh, scoring 16,000 points. Uh, yeah. Really good. Nicely done, Chrissy. And that means we're moving on to our next game of Meso Perch. Oh, yeah, and this one's got a really high jackpot right yeah, now. Yeah, what is that Meso That's Perch That's RJ5616 with yeah. the 30,890 point uh, high score. That is a really hard one to beat right there. Yeah, I mean, you better bring your uh, work hat uh, when you go in to play a little Meso Perch. RJ set the bar high. We'll see if anybody can do that uh, over the course of the next week here, but... Um, but that's going to be a tough sled to do. Oh, yeah. So, um, so that's two. We got two more national days. Yeah, let's look at those uh, next national day. It's National Mutt Day. Yes. Encourages us to embrace, save, and celebrate mixed breed dogs twice a year on uh, July 31st and December 2nd. So it's another one of those days where it's two. Uh, there's two National Mutt Days. That's right. Mutts. Um, Pies and donuts. That's the ones I know for sure. Yes, that's what we know for sure right yeah. now. Um, uh, uh, it just reminds us to celebrate mixed breeds, uh, desperately longing for new homes, millions of loving, healthy uh, mixed breeds, breed dogs in uh, shelters, wait for someone to come and adopt them. So it's a good year to open yourself up to thinking about, oh, maybe you don't want to get the perfect breed and go find a nice uh, mixed breed dog. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's nice to get a mutt, uh, uh, make great uh, dogs, make great pets. And so, um, yeah, think about adopting. We like our mixed breed. Pet. Yeah, our mixed breed is not uh, necessarily mutt. No. No. No, because he's just uh, uh, He was the runt of the litter that nobody wanted. But he, it, what's funny is he's turned out to be the longest out of all of his brothers and sisters yeah. that, yeah. that I know of. Yeah, no, he's 12 years old, but he's still, he's still, uh, you know, other than like when, because he won't stop. If you're throwing a ball, you know, out there for him, he'll just go and go and go. And, uh, but now, like, I don't know if he's got a little arthritis in one of his paws or whatever. Yeah. He'll just kind of start limping. He'll still keep going for the ball, but he'll start oh, limping. Oh, yeah, no, he, you got to take him off. That's how he wants to go out. Yeah. Like, yeah. is playing a little bit of fetch. Like, right. that is that is the way, like, he envisions himself. Just, like, because yeah. I've watched him just, like, 12-year-old old dog. I'm chucking it in the backyard, and I just am, like, throwing it, not thinking about it, just, like, doing my own thing, like, sitting in the, in the chair. And I'm just throwing it, and I just hear... Ching! And I'm like, what just happened? And I just realized that he just ran right into the metal fence <laughs> and just like full head first, just full speed into the metal fence and was yeah. like kind of wobbling. <laughs> Still grabbed the ball and then made his way back to me. Yeah. I was like, okay, we're going to take a break now. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah no, but, you go. But, but yeah. we do love our mixed breed, little uh, toy poodle. Uh, what's and Yorkshire Terrier. Yeah. Mix, yep, yep. 
So uh, there you go. Uh, National Mutt Day. Uh, you know, if you don't have a dog, think about adopting um, a mixed breed dog. And then we got National Special Education Day. Special needs take a variety of forms and can range from developmental disabilities, learning disabilities, health conditions, or even giftedness. What a great, uh, great thing special education is uh, in our oh, uh, education system. Oh, it's so system. useful. Yeah, yeah. Your mom spent a lot of years in a, uh, mm -hmm. a, as a parapro in a special uh, needs room. And uh, yeah, what just she was actually a one on one uh, with yeah. a couple of kids for a long time. And uh, yeah, just a lot of cool blessings out of out of that. Oh, there yeah. was some really cool friendships that she made out of doing that. Yep, yep. So uh, cool thing. Uh, we, we, we celebrate our special educators and our special ed uh, students uh, just really bring joy to uh, the school system and to the world and uh, celebrate them today. So. Uh, we got yeah. about 20 seconds left to get rolled in this next game. And uh, we got a slew of celebrity birthdays as well. To oh, talk yeah, about. we do. Yeah. So uh, we got some fun ones out there. We'll talk about that um, here in just a second as we get these uh, games rolling. Yeah. 45 games of Meso Perch trying to get over 30,000. Really, it's going to take almost a 31,000, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's it would pretty much be 31,000 to be able to pass this uh, high score by RJ5616. So get after it early and often uh, to get that done. We will see how it goes. Plays well, if you want to beat that, you pretty much have to be hot the whole time. Like, you know how you see people get out to those 10,000-point leads really like nice? Like Chrissy, 1965, ended hot on the last game, started off hot this game. Look at that. Yeah. You get those really nice early starts, mm -hmm. and you see them, and you're like, oh, wow, they're about to score a whole bunch, and then they simmer off at the end and end up scoring 15,000, 14,000. Right, right, right. And right. then, but those, when you want to score the 30,000, you have to just be hot throughout the whole match. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That takes a real serious game. Uh, yeah. RJ5616, the best so far of this season of PCS. Um, that, that is 30,890. So we'll see if anybody can get after that score at all. We got Jackpot Jen jumping out in the first place right oh, now. Oh yeah, do you want to talk so, about the results of that uh, first, uh, those uh, first two open sessions? Yeah, let's talk about who's in our top seven between the two uh, first open sessions. Oh yeah, well in seventh place we have Dolly seventy five with uh, thirty eight thousand and eighty points. Uh, uh, session play two, they played in. Uh, so that was, I think, yesterday. Yeah, yesterday's yesterday's session. Yep. Uh, was able to get that into seventh place. Uh, good job, Dolly seventy one. And that's a com combination of three games. You play three games in a row, and the combination of that, that's what gets you into this oh, yeah. top seven. So, uh, Dystony is in sixth place with thirty eight thousand eight hundred and fifty five points. Yeah, that's really good right there. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Um, then uh, not uh, not uh, not unused to being talked about on the broadcast That's right now. Sure. Uh, in fifth place, we have Boat Racer One uh, scored uh, yesterday not a uh, thirty nine thousand two hundred eighty five points in those three games. A uh, really good game by Boat Racer One. Yeah. And then I think just doing this today, one of our folks actually in fifth place right at the moment. In fourth place in the session play, uh, getting this score, I believe, at our lunchtime broadcast is She Devil with 40,300 points in that fourth place spot. Oh, yeah, and then in third place, we've talked about it before, but there's Scuba Steve right there with a 42,995 point total in those three games. Uh, they did uh, Scuba Steve did that yesterday, and uh, holding on to that third place spot, one of our top players uh, since we've been doing PCS. Yeah. Now this is what I've seen out here during the broadcast so far tonight as well, and that's Jackpot 108 in second place. And this score came in today, I believe, uh, at the lunchtime broadcast. It was 44,745 points. Got Jackpot up into the second place spot. 
Oh yeah, and then in first place is Mama Bear with a 48,835 uh, point total in those three games of, uh, and they got that today. Yeah, nicely done everybody. Uh, that is the current top seven. Uh, you guys will get another chance tomorrow to play as well uh we'll be here tomorrow at lunchtime with you guys it won't be at that broadcast so we're gonna we're gonna be uh doing a lunchtime broadcast similar to the one we're doing right now uh from noon to one and then uh cash crew two will be back with you guys for the happy hour broadcast uh at at five o'clock and we will have uh immediately following we will have that uh at six o'clock we will have that open session again and then oh, yeah. again those will come in, and anybody that gets higher scores than these ones currently will move into that top seven. Oh, yeah. It's going to be interesting to see what kind of point totals um, are going to be the ones that stay in the top uh, top seven for these. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm thinking that around these next couple of rounds, we're going to get a 50,000-point getter. Yeah, there, there, there definitely could be. When you see some of these high scores, well, you look at like an RJ, uh, you know, 56-16 and got – Almost thirty-one thousand in one game. Yes. Know, that then, if you just then had two um, ten thousand point games after that, then that would get you, you know, in that fifty thousand. Oh yeah. You know, fifty thousand point range just with that alone. So there's a manual. 0815 in the first place out there. Mrs. T is in sixth. Good to see you out there, Mrs. T. We got Misty56, one of our top players. Uh, Misty56 has got the top score in top dog. Uh, out there is also in our top nine right now. We got Fishy24 in seventh. She Devil in eighth. Boat Racer1 in ninth place. Uh, We'll see uh, some of these celebrity birthdays. Well, I know that um, I know some of these uh, some of these folks is uh, yeah yeah. So a couple of them that I I, I just recognize the name don't really know a ton about. But uh, Charles Ringling, um, born in 1863, formed the Ringling Brothers Circus. Oh, okay. Yeah. So Charles Ringling. Uh, born on this day in 1863. Famous entertainer. Yes. Kind of like us. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, the Three Ring Circus that we run, uh, <laughs> also known as the Ruggles House. But uh, Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah we, get, uh, we get tomorrow to uh, try to expand our uh, ability to entertain people. That's right. We do have our official audition for Family Feud tomorrow. Yes, I'm yeah. excited to try it out. Yeah, it's going to be fun. So we actually uh, play a game uh, of Family Feud, and for the audition, we'll see how that all goes. It's it's through Zoom. Uh, It'll be uh, interesting. Through a Zoom meeting. So yeah, we'll we'll have fun with that. So that will be fun tomorrow. Uh, another name that I'm familiar with: Kathy Lee Crosby, actress, born in 1948. Uh, happy birthday, Kathy Lee. Yeah, I looked up uh, Julie Harris. Yes. Um, actress. Um, she was in uh, movies such as East of Eden, The Haunting, um, the show Knots Landing. Okay. Um, yeah, it looks like House Sitters with, uh, what's his name? Steve. Steve Martin. Yeah, okay. Steve Martin. Okay. Yeah, it was in a lot of really good things. Julie uh, Harris. Julie Harris. Yeah. Happy birthday, Julie. Uh, Stone Phillips, I recognize that too. TV journalist born in 1954. Stone Phillips. Uh, yeah, I recognize that name. Once I see the picture of Stone Phillips, I'm sure I get a better idea of. Oh. Good old, you said Stone Phillips? Stone Phillips, yeah. I think a news reporter. Stone Phillips. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, I've seen this guy before. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. The, yeah, uh, so. American TV uh, uh, reporter and correspondent is best known as a former co-anchor of uh, Dateline NBC. Yep, okay. All right, yeah. Well, happy birthday, Stone. Uh... 
I re definitely recognize also the next one here. Oh, oh yeah, right. Lucy Liu. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Lucy Liu is an American actress who worked uh, in both television and movies. She has received uh, two Scream, Screen Actor uh, Guild Awards and has won a Critics' Choice Awards and a Seoul International Drama Award. Yeah, I know yeah. she was on the TV show Elementary. Uh, Charlie's Angels, I yes, think Charlie's An Angels was in the movie Kill Bill. Mm -hmm. um, was also in the movies Charlie's Angels. Um, looks like a lot of like action, female-led action movies. Yeah, yeah, that's that's uh, seen her in a lot of that kind of stuff. Um, action, mystery, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah good actress, uh, Lucy Liu, and uh, Monica Seles, uh, champion tennis player. Uh, definitely. Uh, know Monica Seles, born in 1973. Um, I think uh, no longer out there playing tennis, but a top tennis player. Kind of like Tony Morelli. Top yes. tennis player. Top, um, just, just in retirement. In retirement, yeah. Yeah, former champion tennis players. Uh, of course, not Tony's birthday, but he is a, just former no. champion uh, tennis player. And then Monica Seles, it is her birthday. Oh, so, yeah, and then our uh, last birthday of the day um, probably the one that is most currently famous. Yeah. Like, yep. as of right now, today, Yeah. most famous. Yeah, I would guess. Not saying most famous overall, though. I might be wording it weird. Yeah. But uh, in 1981, Britney Spears, the singer, was born. A uh, little break from that. Uh, Manuel 0815, scoring uh, 12,595 points. Good job, Manuel. Getting the win there in Mess O Perch, which means we're getting enrolled for Top Dog. What is that top score that we got to beat here in Top Dog? Uh, let's see. That's the Misty 56, who I've seen out there playing. Misty 56 with 27,935 points. See if we can top Misty, or if Misty can top Misty. Oh, yeah, and we'll be right back for that game.
Hey, 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 and we're back. Yeah, and I did get breaking news while we were gone that it is confirmed uh -huh. that Tony Morelli was the 1995 tennis champion. Oh, is that real? I, I, I don't know what he was the tennis champion of. Just maybe household tennis champion. It could be any kind. No, I know he actually did play tennis. He was oh, actually, was he actually really good at he tennis? He was a good tennis player. Yeah, I did that's, know that. That's fun. I, I've tried tennis one time. Yeah. I really, like, have not really dabbled in tennis at all. Yeah. But then I was friends with uh, someone who was on, like, the tennis team. Yeah. And uh, so then I went to uh, the central uh, tennis courts just to mess around and play mm. tennis. And uh, I am horrible at tennis. <laughs> I am right? absolutely terrible. I miss the ball more times than I count just like looking like an absolute idiot, like spinning around doing a ballet like spin after just whiffing a uh, tennis ball. There you go, Forest Hills North High School champion. Woohoo! There Man. we go, there we go. Championship confirmed. There we go. Uh, so yeah, no, I, I've always thought like, you know, a lot of times, uh, you know, as, as as you get a little older, uh -huh. you know, two of the sports that you might pick to play uh -huh. is either golf or tennis, you know? And I've always thought it's just a lot less time commitment and it feels like a little more cardio involved in yeah. tennis than golf, uh -huh. you know? And so I've never been a huge, I like, you know, golf a couple times a year, you know? Yeah. But I've never played tennis at all. So I've always thought I'd like to pick up tennis you know it'd be cool to at least pick up like something that has a similar concept to tennis like a uh what's those calls that they have at all those at like a lot of gyms where it's a big glassed in area where oh, you hit the ball you're talking racket about ball. Like, racquetball yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. racquetball yeah. like that would be a fun thing to pick up and start doing like it's a little bit of racquetball yeah my uh my offensive line coach when i was in college uh so we would uh we'd play handball so we had to, like, during the off season, all of us at offensive line, uh -huh. we had to play handball tournaments. It would just be a tournament, and then it would just start over and be another tournament during the off season, just to keep us our feet moving. It's kind of like some similar moves yeah. to uh, what an offensive line so like has to do. So a quick reaction, yeah, type quick stuff. reaction time and all that. So we'd have this constant just running during the off season of handball tournaments okay uh and so that was kind of fun uh never never got that great i was good against i was good against other offensive line. <laughs> I, I don't know that i was ever i was never good uh oh what we got here we got some more breaking news pickleball is another popular one smaller court there you go pickleball. okay yeah. interesting that would be fun yeah and i think i don't think the smaller court helps me out though I, <laughs> I do not think it helps me out at all. <laughs> you know, we we fancy ourselves decent athletes until we get into something that we've never played before. You know. Oh yeah. Then, no. Yeah. See, I have just come to the conclusion that like any kind of sport that involves me like holding something to hit another object, I'm just bad at. Like <laughs> baseball, like swing a baseball bat, I am terrible at. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'd probably be bad at hockey as well, like yeah. trying to skate around and move around the puck with the stick. Yeah. But, like, if it came to, like, catching something in my bare hand, like, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a whole nother level. Like, I was never a good baseball player. Um, yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. understand. I don't, I don't, I just don't get the athleticism. It's a different kind of athleticism that I just don't have. Yeah. When I play hockey as a, as a kid, you know, like growing uh -huh. up, you know, I was always the goalie. And because that was just because I took up more of the goal than any of the other. Yeah, kids. so you didn't and have so, to react as much. Yeah, just, so I'd actually have my. You more. I had my. I didn't even have skates on. I'd have my moon boots on, <laughs> you know, because we had a buddy. That he lived on a pond, you know, uh -huh. and so uh, we'd go out there to the pond. It'd be frozen over, and then I would just put on as much like clothing and winter clothes and everything, and go out there and just kind of basically pad up. Mm. You know, and I had my moon boots on, and I had my hockey stick and all that, you know, but I was just blocking stuff, man. Just oh, yeah. Blocking. Well, Boat Racer 1 agrees with Nikki saying that uh, pickleball is very good. Okay. All right. Well, we'll have to give it a shot. Yeah, that would be uh, no, I didn't believe be Nikki, but I believe Boat Racer 1. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh -oh. There's, there, there's a controversy in the office. Uh, uh, <laughs> well, we'll see how that plays out. This is this is gonna become a reality TV show now. Oh now, yeah, yeah. Discord in the office. It's all virtual, uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's Discord in the office. Uh, so uh, disgruntled employees 
at the virtual oh, office. Oh, yeah. Well, in first place, <laughs> we have Slim Jim, one of our top players uh, right now. Um, you guys could have a Zoom disagreement. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, anyways, we got Slim Jim Young first. We got Jackpot 108 in second. Jackpot Gem. It's a jackpot uh, a festival right now uh, in third. Oh, yeah. yeah. With second and first both starting with jackpot. Yeah, that's right. Apparently, in this round, you either wanted to have Slim in your name or jackpot. That's, that seems that's gotten you to the top three. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's got you into the top three. We'll I mean, Slim Jim, Slim Jim just seems to be a good name in general since Slim Jim took home that uh, signed photo by B.C. Johnson last week. Yeah, it's hard to argue with that. Hard to argue with that at all. So, uh, Well, speaking of Vikings. Yes. Um, we had a lot of Vikings in the top PFF grades. Yeah, top four PFF grades. Uh, I mean, there's... One, two, three, four, five, five players in the top four in the NFL. In the oh position. yeah, let's talk the about those guys. Right. Yeah. Well, uh, some of the key players to the Vikings' newfound success, which I wouldn't say it's almost bit newfound, but it's kind of just they've put together wins this right, now. Right. Right. They figured right. out how to win together yes. at this point, and uh, that's uh, one of the t one of the players that we can contribute that to is Kirk Cousins getting his act together. Yeah. Yep. Um, he's really improved the second half of uh, winning the winning streak that we've had. Yes. He was turning over the ball a lot in crucial situations. Mm -hmm. And uh, it seemed that he's back to his regular self yes. And uh, these last couple weeks. And now that see. they've went, uh, what, four and one? Yeah, so they, they were they were one in, they were one and five and they're five and six now. So yeah, four and one. Yeah, they went four and one this uh, this last little. Basically stress. November. I think it's in November. Yeah, they went four and one in November. I think they had one win, maybe. Yeah, yeah, they killed it in November. Yeah. that's for sure. And uh, it, part of it goes to Kirk Cousins picking up his game and becoming a more consistent uh, quarterback. Yeah, the number four a graded quarterback in the entire NFL this season now. Uh, so uh, nicely done. Even when he was having kind of his rough patch and everybody was like, oh, maybe the Vikings should draft, yeah. draft a quarterback, uh, he was still always grading out in the top ten. You know, mm -hmm. Because what PFF does when they grade out these throws and everything, they uh, not every interception is the same. So, no. So if it was an interception that was, you know, because the wide receiver, it hit him in the hands and bounced off, that doesn't go against the quarterback. It goes, that goes to the against wide, the wide receiver. receiver. Yeah. And so, uh, so. and so that speaks to wide receiver grades and yes. how much they drop and stuff like that. And we got some receivers yeah. in our uh, top grades as well. That's right. Well, the number two wide receiver, he's been in the number two wide receiver basically all year long, yeah. is rookie Justin Jefferson. Been just tearing it up. I mean, uh, had an amazing year at LSU last year, winning the national championship. Came into the NFL, you think, well, it takes wide receivers a couple years to kind of get up to speed. Oh, yeah. Uh, usually not so much for Jefferson came in became one of the top players right away so. oh I mean he's been an absolute stud the fact that he was the fifth wide receiver taken in last draft just shows to the uh the front office of the Vikings being able to talent evaluate and pick up really star guys yeah Spielman's done a great job I think at, at, in the GM spot um for years and years and years and he's been a little bit underappreciated um, you know, he's done an amazing, amazing job. So, oh, yeah. You know, they've actually talked about, you know, with the Lions firing their GM and, uh, and head coach. Uh-huh. Some people, actually, Herman Moore, one of the top all-time wide receivers for the Lions, uh -huh. uh, actually recommending that they hire Chris Spielman as the GM for the Lions. Yeah. Of course, linebacker great for the Lions and from Ohio State. And, um, I think they got a statue outside of the uh, Ford Field. For Chris Spielman, I don't think he has any front office experience, so probably a bad idea to hire him as the GM. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, but I think part of that goes to Rick Spielman, to his brother being such a long time. And being uh, such a great GM. Yeah, being such a great GM that they figure, well, it's a brother. That might work. Yeah, you know? maybe he'll <laughs> be able to give him a couple tips or something on yeah. how to be a really good GM. Yep, yep. So um, so I don't think that Chris Bielman will be the new GM for the Lions. Uh -huh. but, yeah. Well, I think the player that's seen the biggest increase in a grade uh, with the increase of Kirk Cousins' production, yep. uh, it, seemed, it seemed that both of them have come hand in hand, mm -hmm. and that's uh, Adam Thielen's grade. Yeah. Uh, being graded the third best wide receiver uh, so far, uh, it's uh, it's that's a pretty good feat to have the second and the third. Technically, according to PFF, 
Vikings have the number one receiving threat. Uh, number one receiving attack yes. uh, in the NFL. Well, you got to think, if you, your quarterback's number four out of all quarterbacks, you're, you got one receiver that's number two out of all wide receivers. You got another receiver that's number three out of wide receivers. And I think that's a big reason why uh, we got a good grade at the running back position as well. Oh, uh, yeah. The passing attack in the offense in general has been really good. Um, oh, yeah. And it's yeah. really shown, especially these last couple weeks, where people realize how great Dalvin Cook is. And they're like, okay, we need to really focus on stopping Dalvin Cook. And then uh, Kirk Cousins has been like, well, there's a lot of weapons all over this offense, which we knew going into the season, it just wasn't being shown earlier in the season. Yes. And now it's finally being shown that, oh, we have these weapons on the outside as well, not just Dalvin Cook. Yeah. And I think uh, uh, Justin Jefferson and Adam Thielen have been two of the top guys for that. Yeah. Well, the number three running back graded right now in the NFL is – mentioned Dalvin Cook. Yes. Just doing a great job. So when you got your quarterback, two wide receivers, and your running back all in the top four graded players at their position. Your offense doesn't need much improvement. No. No. They really brought that together. It took a few weeks. Like you say, the whole switch over from uh, Kevin Stefanski leaving mm -hmm. to go to the Browns, all those kind of things happening. It took a little bit to get that all mixed and fucking and right. I think also that is a props to their offensive line as oh, well. Oh, for sure. You know, and they brought some of those young guys have now gotten into the lineup and done a really mm -hmm. nice job on the old line. And so uh, it's it's a good future for uh, you know as we can keep this crew together. Uh, it's good future for the offense for the Vikings. And there, we there go. it is. It's official. Jackpot. 108 taking that uh, first place spot, second place Sim Slim Jim, uh, but Jackpot 108 uh, scored 16,980 points. Uh, really good uh, game by Jackpot. Yeah, that means we're moving into our last game, which is Pride of Minnesota. Oh, yeah, and that is one of our lower scores we have. Um, the lowest score outside of Vikings victory. Um, being uh, held by Jackpot Jen, uh, scored uh, 26,610 points in that top game. It's going to be interesting to see if anybody can come close to that. It's a good game, and Jackpot Jen's been out there and on her leaderboard, it seems like, all night long. So we'll see. Maybe Jackpot uh, Jen will even pass that. Um, but uh, this is, will be the last game that will be broadcast with you guys and we're hoping something exciting happens points wise here in this pride of minnesota one of the games we love so much oh yeah yeah so uh yeah uh while we're still getting enrolled um do want to say to you guys that this sunday we will still have our game day broadcast we're gonna have a blast with you guys we've got the jaguars coming to town uh at noon uh will be kickoff that means that we'll kick off at 11 30 uh, broadcasting the pilot championship series games with you for two hours here. We'll, oh, yeah. we'll be with you guys and uh, we'll be talking all things Vikings, all things NFL and uh, having a great time. Well, that's you your that's uh, your first big shot to get into that top five for uh, Vikings victory since we play so many Vikings victory yes, during that time. We do. We play a bunch of Vikings victory, a bunch of top ten. So it's another good shot at top ten as well. Oh, yeah. Get the top score in that. So uh, we play a bunch of our football-themed games. And, uh, yeah, so it's a good time, uh, you know. And uh, plus, we're going up against the 1 in 10 Jaguars. Exactly. So uh, th that would be di a disappointing loss if we were to get a loss there. This is our opportunity to even up the record at 6-6 six and six against a 1 in 10 team. Let's get this done and let's uh, move forward. Then next week we've got the Buccaneers. We're going down to Tampa Bay and, uh, you know, get, get yeah. some warm weather. And uh, if we can come in there That's with a 6-6 six and six record, I feel I, – I just think – Man, we'll we'll have been since the bye week. If that happens, we will have been five and one coming in that game against uh, against Tampa Bay. And uh, you know we got all the mo going our way. Oh yeah, I mean so. that's going to be the interesting thing. Can they solidify those problems in the defense that uh, that Tampa Bay's having? Can they figure out what kind of locker room issues that they're having? I don't know if it's technically locker room issues, mm -hmm. but uh, there's been just like trying to figure out how this team is working, who's the true leader of the team. I feel like they're still trying to figure that kind of thing out, so it's a good chance for the Vikings uh, next week to uh, get a sneak a win in. Yeah, well, we'll see. I think you know one of the challenges this last week was 
Todd Bowles' uh, refusal to get out of man coverage uh, against the Chiefs and uh, cost them dearly. He did not until the, near the end of the game when he finally got out of man coverage, went into some zone. He was able to actually get some stops on oh, the yeah. Chiefs. And so, but the damage had already been done, and they ended up only losing by a field goal. Uh, but if they would have made that switch a little earlier, now again, if they try to run man coverage against us, good luck with running man coverage against Jefferson, Thielen, and Cook all running around out there. Then you add in Kyle Rudolph and Irv Smith Jr. and all that. And uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I don't expect them to be in man coverage against us. But if, if that is Todd Bowles likes to run man coverage, oh yeah. And so if they do, I think we'll give. Uh, the Buccaneers fits and uh, we're hoping to see more development from our defense yeah because right now we're pretty much a one-headed like monster with just at Eric Kendricks really being a stud for us yeah. on the defensive end really taking control and leading uh leading that defense yeah it feels like and uh taking those young guys under his wing and maybe not giving them technical advice but giving them that leadership advice and he's really uh really been a great player for them being one of the top pff graded linebackers as well yeah um being third overall of he's the all only, linebackers oh, yeah no he's the only guy on the defensive side of the ball for the vikings that grades in the top you know four players at his position oh yeah and so we got four on the offensive side which is awesome right but then we only have eric uh, coming in on that defensive side, so mm -hmm. uh, you know, but we, we're young. We've 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 developed. We've gotten a lot better over the course of the season, and so uh, all the credit goes uh, to the coaching staff and to those players working hard to to get better. Um, and they've done a nice job as the season has progressed. I tell you what, tell you what I've seen uh, happening lately that? that there's a move for, which is terrible for the Vikings. Um, it's people are trying right now. A bunch of Jaguars fans are trying to vote uh, Yannick Ngakwe um, to the Pro Bowl. You know, the, the DN that we traded away yeah, to yeah. the Ravens. Yeah. So that they can, because there's uh, picks that if he gets voted to the Pro Bowl, I think they have a third round pick that gets moved to a second round pick. And like they get more in compensation. But it's it's uh, also just proof that the Pro Bowl is so just messed up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that whole I mean, and just you know, it, it, it and I don't know a perfect system. You know, I'm dealing uh, with you know even at the high school level where you're dealing with um, votes for like all state and all region and all this kind of stuff. You know, mm -hmm. and you got coaches and you know, and then there they've got actually players voting as well, and you got fans voting. You yeah. know, even with us, it's just coaches and like reporters and stuff uh, yeah. doing the voting. But um, but it still can get just so political and all that kind of stuff and people just not really knowing uh, you know who are really the good players and knowing how to evaluate that play and all yeah. that. Yeah. So uh, so anyways, unfortunately, a lot of times folks that deserve to get that recognition don't. Sometimes the folks that uh, don't deserve that recognition do get it. Um, but uh, but so so it goes. Uh, oh yeah, I mean stuff. it's just so. It's 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 hard to get into those awards, and so like there's a lot of times where there's really good players that year. That another year that player would have been the top play, would have been the MVP or yeah. something, or would have been the All Star. Like uh, Drew Brees and Russell w Wilson, uh, they they're both MVP caliber players, but never have received one just because of situation. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, it's it's kind of hard to imagine those two guys, you know not being more awarded than they have been over the course of their careers. You know, their their Hall of Fame, uh, you know, in my book, two uh, first ballot Hall of Fame players, but uh, not not getting the recognition um, most years that they probably deserve. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I, I still think Russell Wilson, Russell Wilson is um, the, the best quarterback in the NFL. What he does with the least amount is oh, I mean, amazing. it's incredible. Yeah. And there's, it's just uh, DK Metcalf wouldn't be the player that he is without Russell Wilson. Guy's a beast, though. Uh, they've never, they've never built a line around him. No. And uh, so he's just been a absolute consistent piece for that offense mm -hmm. for so many years. 
Um, the fact that they were able to get him in, what, the third round? Yeah, I think it was third round, yeah. Oh, uh, it's just amazing. Yeah. Look at that. Slim Jim back out in the first place. Shorty, one, two, four in second. Well, now Keeves is in the first. Uh, Minnesota Hunter is in sixth. Trix, 421 in seventh. She Devil in eighth. Manual, 0815 in ninth. Slim Jim is now in second. Fishy, 24 in third. Shorty, one, two, four in fourth. And JJ Mack in fifth. Yeah, I'm looking at Shorty124 and seeing uh going to be watching for that. Also, Dolly75, really low on plays as well. We'll see what can happen between those two. Dolly75 right now currently in seventh place in our open session plays. Um, yeah, in that seventh place spot with 38,080 uh, points there. It, she got that yesterday in our open session uh, yesterday. So, um, yeah, there we go. We'll keep an eye on Dolly75. I wonder if that's a – we get a lot of famous players. That might be Dolly Parton out there playing. Good old Dolly Parton. Yeah, yeah. Although, I don't know if Dolly – I mean, uh, I well, maybe Dollywood is not open. Uh, I don't know yeah, about the COVID it stuff. it probably isn't. Yeah, so uh, she might not have as many obligations. I haven't, even, out I haven't in heard Chattanooga. of heard anything about Dolly Parton like recently. I feel like she's been kind of just doing her own thing. Yeah, late, I lately. think you know she's like she's got to be in her seventies. Uh, and uh, yeah, I look her up, but uh, uh, you know I don't think she's aged since like you know nineteen seventy five. So I don't know if you know. There's there's different. There's a different time zone. Yeah, she's seventy four. Yeah, there's a there's a different time world for Dolly Parton than the rest of us. Yes, she lives in a completely different. Uh, like some kind of an dimension. airtight airtight chamber, uh, <laughs> you know that uh, is not uh, is she not aging like, her. She wakes up like the Terminator every morning. Yeah. just like smoke. <laughs> just <laughs> run, Dolly world. <laughs> All right. So, uh, <laughs> anyways, good to have you with us, Dolly. Um, <laughs> So that was all of our PFF grades. We told you guys about uh, game day. Make sure you're here with us on Sunday. Of course, uh, the next couple of days, we will be doing our, our lunchtime and our happy hour broadcast. Tomorrow after happy hour, we do have our open session, another open session play. So make sure you're out oh, for that. Oh, yeah. Show up um, to as many of those open session plays as you can because those are really good shots to be able to get top scores and get into that uh, shot for that 10K total yes. pot. In the finals. There's only 12 uh, you know, 12 spots in the finals, but seven of them will come from those open session plays. Oh, so, yeah. It looks uh, like a lot of people have used up their plays. Fishy24 all out of plays right now, uh, scoring 9,610 points. Uh, Dolly75 still with quite a few points, and MN Hunter still with a good amount of points as well. JJ Mack and Shorty124 uh, both looked like they were out of plays. Chuckles has a few plays left out there. But well, we got, we're under three and a half minutes, and I was just thinking we haven't done our uh, This Day in History. We haven't done our uh, charity spotlight. Yeah, let's so. let uh, people know. Well, I'll let them know that day in history. Okay. In uh, 1972, the uh, temptation earned, the Temptations earned the last of their four chart-topping hits uh, when Papa was a rolling uh, stone reaches number one on the Billboard Hot 100. Over Papa the was a rolling stone. Oh, yeah. Uh, Over the course stone. of their uh, <laughs> story <laughs> careers, the Temptations uh, placed 38 hit records in the pop top 40. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, and I know that sounded like I was a part of the Temptations when you heard me sing there, but yeah. I actually wasn't. We just um, do covers. Just, just, <laughs> just a cover. I'm a temptation. I'm part of a temptation cover band. <laughs> when the bars back open back up in Minnesota, look out for me and my <laughs> temptation cover band coming to a town near you. Um, we only play at uh, at uh, you know, no at ba bars. We only play at bars that do pilot games. Though. Oh. All right, here we go. Uh, <laughs> We got, unless, unless Tony says, no, we don't actually want you to perform at the bars that, <laughs> no. that play pilot. I don't um, think they that, do. It's going to help us lose. That's going to make us lose business. Um, we got, okay, Charity Spotlight. 
Hayfield Commercial Club. Uh, their mission is to promote businesses within the community of Hayfield and to encourage community involvement. They hold the following events for the community annually. That is the citywide garage sale. Easter coloring contest for school age children, a costume judging contest for Halloween, and they bring Santa to town every year. Well, uh, if you play normally at Spare Time Lanes, you've been supporting that charity. So that's a great charity to support. And uh, Spare Time Lanes, one of those great locations that we have out there. There are always a lot of folks out there playing pilot games. And we're great to be associated with Spare Time Lanes and the Hayfield Commercial Club. So, oh, yeah, uh, great yeah. charity right there. Yeah. That's our so many that we uh, partner with. Absolutely. Um, they may, maybe the Hayfield uh, Commercial Club would like to uh, bring me and my <laughs> Temptations uh, cover van <laughs> to town. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> uh, rolling stone. There's Dolly 75 in first place. Um, Bucks with uh, in sixth place with still quite a few plays left. Make sure you get your plays in with only 30 seconds left. Um, it's going to be a tight one. Well, Lissa in second place with a whole bunch of plays left. Um, we're going to see how many points uh, can Willissa get. Uh, my prediction is that she's Willissa is going to end up getting that first place spot. All right, let's see. Got 17 seconds left to get her done. Willissa, oh, yeah. There I you mean, go. if Willissa doesn't get the points in, though. Yeah, game earlier, Willissa didn't look like she got all of her plays in. Um, oh, and yeah. So I'm hoping, I don't know if she's having trouble uh, with it her phone. Looks phones, zero. But. See Let's see when it flips over. It looks like Dolly's still holding on to that first place spot. So my guess Let's is Melissa didn't get all of her points in. Dolly. And good job, Dolly75, proving my prediction wrong, scoring 10,610 points. Good job, Dolly75. And you brought in a couple jokes, and we got to hear uh, you sing a little bit of The Temptations now. <laughs> I did. I, you know, we try to bring you... True quality broadcasting gold every time we come on. And, uh, yeah, we did it once again. Congratulations. Oh, yeah. Ian. Make sure that you uh, show up for happy hour tomorrow. We'll be with you guys. Yeah. And remember, when you play pilot games, your community wins. Have a good night, guys. Bye.